I've been looking at a lot of these Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 based mini PCs and I did not expect this one to be one of if not the best. This is the Ace Magic S3A and it features the Ryzen 9 8945HS and also we've got that 780M under the hood for gaming. So this thing I'll tell you right out of the box it's beastly and it's got a dial that can make it beastlier. Right off the bat let's talk about what makes this different than a lot of the other Ryzen mini PCs. Well, it's a tiny bit bigger. It's in this interesting looking case. Like what's up with that? It's really easy to open up. I'll show you that in a second. But right there on the front, your big round cylindrical power button. You see that? That is not just a power button. That is also a performance style. And we have three different modes and that changes just the wattage that goes to the CPU. So if you're like watching movies or just hanging out, turn it down and put it on quiet mode. It's gonna pull 20 watts of power and it's completely quiet. I'll show you those tests, but you know, we're just talking right now. Then if you move it to the middle, that's auto and it'll go up to about 45 right there. And you know, the fans ramp up and down or whatever, but this is good for general use, indie gaming, whatever else. But if you need a little bit of extra horsepower, crank it up to performance, you're gonna get a few extra FPS in your games and it's going to push this to 55 watts somewhere around there. We'll do all the testing on that in just a second, but that's the thing that makes this different. Now, I need to say one more thing about Ace Magic before we go on. Uh, I did the virus scan, took a look through some of the Windows folders and everything looks clean. This is, I mean, it still has some provisioning packages from the manufacturer, but it's mostly a vanilla installation of Windows. And uh, they do put a sticker on the back that says like, hey, don't plug up your, your ethernet because that way you'll be able to just log in to Windows with an offline account and you won't have to sign up for the online account. So I kind of like that a lot of the many PCs that I've been getting from different manufacturers, including this one, have that little note that's like, just don't plug it up until after you get into the OS. Before we do that, look at all my beautiful games. This is my PC game collection, but it's also a whole bunch of shirts that I'm gonna be doing for 80, I don't know, 70, 80% off. Also the hardware and the mouse pads, use coupon code Happy Hardware, and you'll get 50% off that. I'm trying to clear up the shelves as much as possible. Now these prices are only gonna be for the stuff I have here on the shelf. There's a few things that are print on demand, like this one. Those prices will not be changing, but you can go on there and grab just all kinds of t-shirts. I've got all kinds of good stuff left over there. I want more room for my games. Now, you're gonna have to pay a little bit of shipping, but if you grab multiple things, maybe some hardware, maybe some of these, well, that's gonna help a lot. Also, I've got a bunch of games I'm not taking with me, and some of them I've just got duplicates of. They're actually really good games. So I'll throw some of those into the boxes if you order a few things and there's extra room in the box and it doesn't like, you know, cost me an extra several dollars. I'll throw some games in there. So I'll be giving away that. And I'm also going to be giving away random just stuff from the office that I don't need, little bits of hardware. And then the more premium hardware, I'm gonna put on the used category over here. If you just come to epicpants.com and scroll down the page about halfway, you'll see there's a, a used category. I got microphones, handheld consoles, got a few copies of Windows on here. Look at that Windows 98 sealed in the box. The idea is I take care of you with some good sale prices and you take care of me by getting this stuff off my shelf so I have a little more room. Head over to epicpants.com and now on to our regularly scheduled program. For the Ryzen 9 8945 HS is 8 core, 16 threads, turbos up to 5.2. That's what makes it a little bit faster than the Ryzen 7, which turbos up to, I think, 4.9. Max TDP, I said 55, it's 54 officially. And then you got 16 megabytes of your L3 cache. We got 32 gigabytes of DDR5, 5600 speed memory. It's uh, crucial under the hood yet again. Crucial's cornered the market, it seems. Then we have uh, support for two M.2. It comes with one pre-installed. If you, I mean, if you get the bare bone, it doesn't, but this one came with one, one terabyte drive pre-installed, and it's a fast one. We'll test that in a second as well. I did not expect them to throw a super fast drive in there as well. I thought they were gonna cut a corner somewhere, but so far they have not. We got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and it does support three screens. We've got HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 2.0, and one of the USB 4 will support another screen. So we've also got the Radeon 780M and I love it. It's my favorite integrated GPU. Um, I guess there's some newer things that are fancier now, but I, I love this one. 2800 megahertz, you know, it's already an A3 stuff and it's uh, got 12 cores just for the graphics card. If you're curious about the AI performance, 39 tops. I don't mess around with that, so I'm not even gonna get into it, but yeah. All right, let's go through the ports right there on the front beneath the power button, that's USB 4, the first USB-C right there. Then we have two USB type A, they're both 3.2, uh, gen two by two. That's 10 gigabits per second. Then we've got our combo audio jack. Now, if you flip it around to the back, we have four of the USB 3.2 uh, Gen 1. Those are five gigabits per second, I believe. And then below that, we have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, 
Then we have our DisplayPort and our HDMI. Then there's a Kensington lock just hanging out there for whoever needs it, I guess. Now, opening the side, this is a magnetic case because they know you're not gonna be playing football with this thing. Anyway, so you just grab the top and it comes right off. It's, you know, it's secure. There's a little latch there and everything, but any screws or anything like that, you just pop off the side and there it is. I don't know who needs it to be this easy, but it is, and it's kind of cool. And you can install extra stuff if you want to. It's really freaking easy. The dimensions on this unit are 128 by 128 by 41.3 comes with Windows 11 Pro. All right, let's just see how fast this is, shall we? Let's go in and test it out. I'm gonna test out all three of the different modes, just when it comes to the audio and like the, you know, the sound, see how much noise it generates on all the three different performance modes. But as far as all of the testing goes, I'm gonna test it on performance just so you can see what it can do all the way turned up. All right, we're running around here in Baldur's Gate 3, playing on medium, and I'm running this uh, with FSR 2.2 unbalanced because that's what gives us a very playable frame rate, even though we do have a little bit of the blurring from the upscaling. So yeah, it is what it is. Still the best game of the decade. I would probably play this on low myself, just because I prefer to not have FSR. But if you want just a little bit more detail and you're okay with a little bit of, uh, I don't know, bad glasses is what it feels like, FSR and all that stuff, I think it's pretty good. So let's see, there we go. Let's try it on low and just see how it runs. And FSR, I'm gonna turn that off and just see what that's like. So low without FSR is in the 30s and 40s. So you could play it like this because you know, it's a turn-based game. It doesn't require a lot of fast action and all that stuff. It is gonna feel a little chuggy at some points when it drops down the 1% lows don't feel amazing. But yeah, you could totally play it this way if you wanted to. So anyway, totally fine to play this on medium with FSR. Um, in the city's probably low with FSR. But yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 will run just fine on this. All right, let's have a look at Cyberpunk 2077. I'm gonna run this on 1080p, and then I'm gonna come over here and just try this out on medium and then low. So running on medium, we got a pretty nice 42.45 FPS. Check it out, the minimum's only 36.5. So it is a consistent FPS. You can play it just fine like this. It'll probably feel better than most consoles. But let's go ahead and test it on low. I just wanna note that also the AMD uh, FSR was on on the auto setting. It is when you just put it on medium. So we'll come back over here and we'll try it on low. And low's looking pretty nice as well. The minimum came up to 42.34 and the average is 49.31. So I think Cyberpunk's very playable on this system and low looks amazing. I mean, take a look at this. If, you know, every game looked this good on low, then we'd be, uh, we'd be in a different world, I guess, yeah. I like to recommend some games that work really well on these mini PCs, and this one works on just about any mini PC. It's a new game called, it's a survival horror game, kind of like, you know, I guess Fable Frame and Resident Evil, Silent Hill, all those games. Uh, you know, it was made in Unity. They didn't go crazy when it comes to like all the textures and, and uh, polygons and whatnot, so it'll play just fine on just about any system, including systems that are way slower than this one. Let's go ahead and check this out. A lot of atmosphere, you're a photographer, which kind of reminded me of Fatal Frame, but I haven't gotten far enough into it to tell whether or not it's more like Fatal Frame, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, or what. Look at that chunky old 90s computer. And we're just completely stuck at 60 FPS, so this game runs fine. If you're looking for a new survival horror game to play, and you want something that's indie and kind of interesting and combines a bunch of old feelings from childhood. Puts them into a, a new package with some interesting new ideas. I haven't gotten that far into this, but you know, forgot my flash button. Oh well, it works. Out of all the Ryzen 9 8945HS systems, I think this one has maybe the best score, probably because I'm on performance mode, but we got 75.5 FPS with a score of 3158, minimum 36. Now what's interesting is some of the other units I've tested I've had a slightly better minimum of like 39 or 40, but this one had a better FPS and a higher score. Superposition at 1080p. Never dropped below 32.78, which is really impressive for an integrated GPU, the 780M. Average 39.35, minimum 32.78. Comparing this to the Minix that I tested like a few days ago, that one scored 52.33, and uh, the average was 39.15 versus 30. It's basically the same. A basically identical performance yeah this one's a tiny bit faster like not even a percent faster but yeah so this is exactly the performance that i expected from the 8945hs and remember this is on performance mode 
Let's have a look at Cinebench, and we'll start off with our single core score. Single core is pretty beastly on this 8945HS, as you can see. It's faster than i7s from a few generations ago, so take that with a grain of salt, but it's quite a bit faster than that old 7700K that we used to love. More cores, more threads as well, but it's, it's little, you know. So the single core score is 1819. When it comes to our multi-core score, you can see there where it stacks up a little bit faster than the Threadripper 1950, which was a 16 core from back in the day. So this is, it's fast, it's no slouch. 16804 is our multi-core score. Geekbench, 2634 on the single and 13316 on the multi-core score. Here's all the individual tests. Pause if you need to see anything in particular. And then right on over here, really nice OpenCL score for an integrated GPU, 3310. There's our individual tests. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, performance. Yeek. All right, so let's take a look at the heat and everything. We've, this has been running for 26 minutes and I'm running this on the performance mode, which is a lot of power. It gets up to around 55 watts is what I've seen here. Sometimes the package goes up and down, 51, somewhere in that range. And as you can see up here, it's hot, 90.4 degrees. It's also pretty loud, I can hear it. I don't want it to go above 95, but 90C is okay-ish. Anyway, as you can see here, it's, um, you know, got a lot of wattage, 53 watts. Looks like I've seen up to 55. Let's go ahead and put it on the automatic mode by turning the big dial. What's cool is you can just turn the dial while it's actually working and watch. I just turned it and already it's dropping down 85. Okay. And this dropped down to 44 watts, as you can see right here, 45. So there we go. And then I'll drop it down once more. There we go. Now we're on the quiet mode. And look at that. The temperatures are just plummeting and we are limited to around 20 watts. So this one's completely quiet and it's running as if it were idling right now when it comes to like the CPU, even though we're still using 100% of the CPU usage, we're just using whatever 20 watts will let us do. So this is how you can control what's going on. You got the dial there. If you're just chilling, you know, you don't need all the power and you want it to be completely quiet. All right. So this is just the room. It's 43.5. It's a little loud in here, but whatever. Now we're going to test out the quiet mode. See how it sounds. You cannot hear the quiet mode. It's official, but it's, you know, 20 watts. So whatever. All right, let's put it on auto, which will bring it up to 45 watts. And let's see. All right, on the auto mode, we're getting 48.7. All right, now let's try performance. And on performance, we are getting 49.8. So it's definitely uh, quite a bit louder, you know, compared to the quiet mode, it's not insane, but its you can definitely hear it. It doesn't ramp up and down either, which I like. It's just a steady fan sound, but yeah, it's gonna be a little bit louder on the you know performance mode, of course. All right, they didn't mess around when it comes to the drive. Let's go down here and take a look at the drive temperatures, smart temperatures, and check that out. So this is a drive, looks like from China with the Maxio technology controller that we see on a lot of these. Now, this is going to give you insane performance until the buffer uh, fills up. That's the way these drives work. But for most people, the buffer will fill up and then it'll drop down to like 5,000 megabytes a second. So this is, I, I like it, I'll take it. 7,000 megabytes per second on the read, 5,000 on the right. Let's take a look at the IOPS. 200, this is stupid fast. I can't believe they put a drive this fast uh, into a, a system like this. Usually you get, you know, like mediocre drives in these systems, not something that's going to be this fast, but hey, we're seeing a lot of these with the Maxio technology controller uh, coming out of China, and they're all really fast, especially right out of the gate. So for just regular operations in Windows, it's going to be extremely snappy. Now, the temperatures did not get above 49 either, so it's got a big fan in there, plus the heat shield on top. I don't know if this is accurate. That, that's so low. Drive temperature 357, so that, that makes more sense, but still, you know, anything under 70 is, like, amazing. So it's fast, and it stays nice and cool. So there you have it. I really like it. It was surprising how good it is. I love the fact that I can crank it down to quiet. That's one of the things about a lot of the mini PCs is they have smaller fans, and kind of don't like the the whirring sound of some of the smaller fans even if it's not too loud i can hear it it sounds like that tiny little jet engine or whatever but this one you just turn it down to quiet while you're watching a show or something or chilling or doing just regular work and you don't hear it at all i really like that i think that's really cool and being able to do that on the fly is is awesome i mean i'm not having to go into the bios of the uafi and messing with any settings just reach up and turn a knob that kind of makes this different than everything else that I've that I've messed with. It's like our old school turbo buttons on our computer, but you know, it's cool. You have to you have to turn the dial down a little bit to play Jazz Jackrabbit, okay? 
think the only thing that's a little bit weird is a lot of the competition has two of those 2.5 gigabit per second ports. I've only ever used one, but I'm always like, ooh, two, yay. But if you ever need it, just grab an adapter, like a USB-C adapter for 20 bucks or whatever, or 50 bucks or however much those are. So that's not a huge downside in my opinion. Otherwise, yeah, it's good. It's really good. Ace Magic, this is your best product yet. So thanks very much for making it. It's cool. <laughs> All right, I, I guess I didn't expect to um, like it. I mean, it looks like a gamer thing, but it's, I don't know, it's growing on me. I kind of want to keep this one and use it. Anyway, let me know what you think of this in the comments. What would you use it for? And head over to Epic Pants. Don't, you know, you can't have my games. You can have some of the merch that's up yonder on the shelf. Anyway, see you in the comments. Mm -hmm.